Hey guys, Rick here from Earthborn Equipment. Behind me we have a JCB 3CX14 Baco. We're going to take a couple minutes and do an operational walkthrough with this machine. Uh, this machine is about 18,000 pounds, just under, and uh, has a dig depth in the back of 18.6 with the extending dipper. The machine runs off a 70 horse, 74 horsepower JCB Ecomax engine, which needs no DEF or DPF, which makes it really uh, easy to maintain. Okay, so we'll start around the front here. First off, we have the, the grill. You're gonna take your JCB key, the same key that opens the door, same key that starts the machine in the ignition. You can pop the front grill off uh, using that key. And then inside here, you have easy access to your battery. You have your battery isolator switch. With just a uh, quarter turn is easy to remove. You can take this with you. You can leave it in the machine, but this cuts off all the electrics to the machine. So good to use when you're uh, operating, if you're letting it sit for a little while, uh, or if it's super cold and you have a drain on the battery, you can disconnect that with that isolator switch. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to release the hood on this machine. Right in here, to the left of this brake, you have a hood pull, so you pull that, which will release the lock on the hood. All right, after releasing the hood, then you can just lift up. It's uh, air shock assisted. You'll be able to, to open up the hood, just like that. Okay, if you need to access the engine compartment, we're able to raise these loader arms and lock it out with our safety, safety bar here. The way you do this is just push up on these clips, turn them, and then you're able to remove the safety bar. I'm gonna set this down here. We're gonna start up the machine, we'll raise the loader arms and I'll show you where to put it. So once you have your loader arms raised up in the air, you can take your safety strut, put it on the cylinder, okay, and then you have this clip here that you can feed this the rope through, the strap through, and tighten it down. Make sure that strap is as tight as you can get it. If you're in a extremely cold climate, if equipped, these machines will have a block heater. So it's a standard plug that you can plug in any outlet. And um, they recommend that you want to keep these plugged in for at least nine hours. So if you have the opportunity to plug it in overnight before you're using it, the next day if it's extremely cold weather, you can uh, use the block heater, which is located right here on the driver's side. Okay, so with the loader arms up, you do have good access, easy access to all your filters to do your daily checks. Uh, please watch the other video, the, the daily check and maintenance video for all the different spots of where you can check. But on both sides, you do have easy access to a lot of the components underneath uh, the hood here. Yeah, yeah, this machine's equipped with street pads as well as dirt pads or dirt outriggers on the other side. So the way you would flip these, it's a, it's a little bit of a, you got to muscle it. But what you would want to do is pull up on this until you get it to a point, a little bit past halfway that you can put the outrigger down and finish it off. There's a little rubber stopper on this side that creates tension so they, they stay tight. There's a few locks on the back too to lock this boom in place. So come around here and right here in the center you have a uh, slew lock. So that will go right in this hole right here. Once you have the boom straight, you'll be able to feed this down in there, okay? And that will prevent the boom from being able to turn left and right. Some guys use it during transportation, uh, or if you had any place where you didn't want that boom to, to go. Right under here, you also have a, this is your actual boom lock for tilting in and out. This is controlled by a wire pull, pull line that goes inside the cab. But this will lock into here, preventing the boom from drifting down if you have the machine off. Uh, or if you're transporting it and want to uh, lock that boom in, this is where you would do that. And I'll show you that in a little bit when we're inside the cab. Okay, we have another lock back here. This one is for your extending dipper. 
So you have a uh, linchpin here that you would pull out. Once you have it at the right position, this pushes into there, okay? And this will lock that extending dipper up in the arm, okay, so that over time, if, you let, if you're letting this machine sit, the boom will drift, okay? So you wanna be careful and always lock this up when you're letting it sit or put the bucket on the ground, okay? So this, this pin here will control that, will lock that extending dipper up into the boom. So these machines have a lifting point right here on the back dog bone, you can have uh, you can get one of these shackles and basically lock it right on here. And this shackle will um, max out. This is the, the lifting point where you can max out the lifting of this machine is from this position. Uh, not necessarily over the bucket, but this is the best place to lift uh, on this machine. All right, so we'll move to inside the cab now. Around the back here, you do have a uh, coat hanger for a hook or for your hard hat. Uh, you have different compartments where you can place things. And uh, we'll go over the buttons and operation of this machine now. Inside the cab, you'll notice there's a few Q QR codes that'll take you to some videos. Uh, that'll be really helpful. Up here in the left-hand corner, you're gonna have a JCB quick start guide. That'll have all different types of machines, but you just flip through and look for the 3CX14. That'll give you some in-cab instruction. And then we also have our Earthborn QR codes. So we have the, the daily maintenance and machine care video, and then the operational video, which is the one we're doing now. Okay, so up top here, we do have a seat sheet. Okay, you can adjust this however you'd like. We also have some mirrors. Okay, this one looks directly behind you and then you have two on the outside corners. Here's another door that you can use. Opens up with that red lever there. Okay, and then moving around, we have a uh, right rear window. There's two securements on here. Unlock the top one. And it has a setting where you can just crack it open uh, or you can undo it fully and push it all the way around lock it into the doors you have open access in the back. Okay, before you start the machine, there's a few things that need to happen. This is your forward and reverse selector. Okay, the machine will not start if it's in reverse or forward. It has to be in the center location uh, for the machine to start. That's the first safety switch on it. The second one is your emergency brake or your parking brake. If this is in the down position, okay, the machine will not start. It has to be locked up in the up position uh, with the emergency brake on, uh, and then we'll be able to start the machine. Uh, moving around to some of these controls here, you have a couple selectors. This one would be a two-wheel two -wheel drive and two-wheel braking. The center one that it's on now is two-wheel drive and four-wheel braking, which is best for highway use. And then you have a four-wheel drive, four-wheel braking selector on the right-hand side. Moving up here, you have a your blinkers, your four ways. Okay, that will set off the lights on the outside of the machine. Moving down here, you have your gear selector. Okay, you have four gears in this machine. On the side of this selector is a transmission dump button. Okay, so if you're moving on the fly from gear one to two, you're going to want to hit that gear uh, dump transmission dumps button and move it into the next gear sort of like a clutch in a car. Right here you have your loader arm stick. So we'll show you in a minute, when you pull back on this, it's gonna raise the loader arms up. When you push forward, it is gonna lower the loader arms. And if we push it towards us, it's gonna curl the bucket. And if we push it away from us, it's gonna dump the bucket. Okay, so like I said, moving this stick towards you is going to curl that bucket, okay? And moving it out away from you is going to dump the bucket. Okay, so this machine is also equipped with a float option. Basically, if you put this stick all the way forward and then go past that, there's going to be a second detent here that's going to allow you to be in float. So your bucket will have no down pressure. It's used for grading, the 
bucket will float along the ground and knock down the high spots. Okay, so down on the floor you have your accelerator pedal, and then you also have your brake pedal. This brake pedal has an option to split the brakes so that you can brake the left side or brake the right side independently from each other. Okay, talking about the seat, we uh, have some adjustments you can make. The uh, seat belt you can pull out, you should wear this at all times. Lock that in. You have armrests on both sides. Underneath the armrest, they have these uh, little knobs that you can tighten to set the armrest where you would like. Okay, so you lock them into place, whatever feels comfortable for you when you're operating. And then you have a series of different levers down here where you can adjust the seat. This one will adjust the, the tension of the seat depending on your weight and you can move around and, and make the seat nice and comfortable. You also have the option to adjust your steering wheel, your steering column. There's a lever right down here that you'll pull up and then you can adjust it to the angle that you'd like. Okay, and up, up here on the, on the sticks, uh, this is your forward and reverse. Uh, this also has your horn button for the front. Okay, press this button in, that'll do the horn. And on the right hand side, you have your wiper blades the front so you have a couple settings and then if you push this in right on this end button here it will spray uh, your windshield wiper fluid okay when starting the machine you want to click it once to the accessory line okay let the buzzing stop now in extreme cold weather i'll show you the icon's going to appear right here it's a uh, glow plug icon extreme cold weather you're going to let this stay on and you're going to turn your key on and let it sit until that light disappears. We're in a warmer climate right now so it's not needed. But after you, after that light goes off in extreme cold weather, then you'll turn it all the way to the right to the third position and start the machine. Alright, so moving across the instrument panel here, we have a couple different buttons, a couple different settings. This is your fuel gauge here. This one is going to be your RPM gauge. Okay, this is a clock which you can set to your time and then this is your temperature gauge okay starting up top you have your uh, climate control so you have your heater and air uh, controls up here you have three fan settings you have your cold and hot temperature control okay and then you have a recirculation uh, control that you can recirculate it from in the cab or outside the cab and then this will be your um, your AC on switch okay so when you're turning this on in the summertime you want your AC you're gonna move it to the cold setting you're gonna turn your fan on and you're gonna turn on your AC button okay you'll see this button light up when that uh, that is on a little hard to see right now because of the daytime all right moving over to the switches on the panel right here we have a high low hydraulic setting You'll notice on the screen here when you switch it, it will go from low hydraulics, it'll say standard or high flow on the on the button when you change it. Now this, this speeds up the hydraulics to the machine. So basically when we're in low flow, the flow to the loader arms or the back digging end is going to be slower. When we switch it to the high flow, it's going to be faster. We'll try to capture that on video here now. Okay, this is at the low, low flow speed as we're raising the bucket at about 1500 RPMs. Okay, you'll notice the speed of that. On the high flow speed, about the same RPMs. So it does move the, the loader arm and the digging end, it will move it faster. Okay, we have some uh, other switches over here. This is a beacon light. So if equipped, you'll be able to turn that beacon on. There's a plug on the outer roof area that you can hook up a beacon and turn it on and off with this switch. This one is your front work lights. So when you turn those on, the lights in the front will go on. This button right here, we'll show you in a minute, but this is a return to dig function. So when we have that on, we'll show you how to use that return to dig. This is your hammer circuit. Turning that on will turn on your hammer circuit for the back end. This one is your rear working light. So you have lights in the back. And then this will be your windshield wiper for the back as well. All right, now we're going to show you what this return to dig button. I'm going to leave it off for the moment. We're going to raise up the loader arms. Okay, we're going to pretend like we're loading a truck. Okay, we'll raise it all the way up, and then we're dumping. And once we're at the full dump position, 
leaving this return to dig off, if I move this stick to the left, it just curls it up in increments as I'm doing it. Now, if I had this return to dig function on, which I'll switch this bucket on, button on here. Okay, now when I move this stick, it's gonna have a, a position where it's gonna hold itself there. So you have to be in the fully dump position. And then when I move this all the way over, and I can let go of the stick, it's gonna automatically level that bucket out so that it, it, when it, we lower the loader arms, it comes down to a level location on, on the ground. Okay, and then back, back here we'll have a hand throttle for uh, increasing your RPMs or decreasing your RPMs while you're using the digging end. Now one thing I want to point out, this one was left in say a mid, mid throttle position when the machine was turned off. So if I go to increase that throttle, you're going to see that nothing happens. And what you have to do is you have to reset it to the top position and then when you pull it down, it's going to increase your throttle. Okay, so if you find this not working, the throttle may have been left in a mid-throttle when the machine was turned off, which you'll just have to reset it at the top before you increase the throttle again. Okay, one more button down here. We have uh, it's two arrows, one going up, one going down. This is a loader quick hitch function. This machine isn't equipped with one, but if you did have a loader quick hitch on the front, you would hold this button down and you would hear the beep. That would know that you let you know that your auxiliary hydraulics are being routed to the quick hitch and um, that your your functions will unlock the quick hitch. Um, so this button won't be used if it's a standard pin on bucket. Okay, now we'll move around to the back. Right here on the side of your seat you do have a lever and this is how you unlock your seat to then turn around to the excavating end. Okay on the back go end here you do have a back window that can fold up above your head. You have two thumb clips on either end you want to push both of them down and pull back towards yourself and then it'll be uh, air, air assisted up to above so you have nice visibility out the back you can communicate with your other operators okay down here you do have a storage uh, area storage box keep your owner's manual in there there's also an option to keep it in the back of the seat uh, but nice storage area on the floor here you have a, a rocker switch a uh, foot switch for your uh, extending dipper. So if you push back on it, we'll show you this in a minute, push back, it will uh, retract the dipper. If you push forward, it'll extend the dipper. And then moving around to this side, we have your hammer circuit. And this will engage the hammer circuit when you step on that uh, button. Okay, you have two wobble sticks here. Okay, this is for controlling the backhoe. These are set up in SAE operation. So I'll show you those in a second. Down here, if you can get, get all the way down here, there's a boom lock, okay? This is that boom lock we talked about earlier in the video that's connected to that cable. So if I wanted to unlock that boom, I'm gonna pull my boom all the way back till it's far this location, and I'm gonna pull on this cord, which is gonna raise up my boom, and then I can push the boom forward and unlock it. Okay, it's just a mechanical, operation there's no electronics involved so you just need to pull on that cord and then move your boom forward to unlock it all right right in the center here you have your outriggers you have one for each outrigger on either side if you push them forward it'll lower it if you push to the other side it'll lower that one as well and once you have your machine stabilized you're ready to dig these controls will control your dipper and boom Okay, if we move this one left, it's going to swing the boom, left, I'm sorry, right, it's going to swing it right, and then left, we'll swing it left, and then this one, this control here, will control our curl and dump of the buckets moving it left and right. Pushing this one forward will move our dipper out or up. Okay, and pulling it back in will move the dipper in. Same on this control, moving this forward will move the boom down. And pulling it back will move it up. Okay, so just once again we have 
right, we'll uh, dump the bucket. Left, we'll curl the bucket. Up, we'll raise the, the uh, dipper. Pulling it in, we'll bring the dipper in. And then on the left-hand side, we have your swing, which is left and right. Then you have your boom operation. Forward, down, back is up. Okay, then back on the floor here, this is the extending dipper we were talking about. When we push it forward, it's going to extend the dipper out. Okay, and when we push it with our heel, it'll bring it back in. All right, thanks guys. That concludes our JCB 3CX operational video. Inside the cab, you'll notice QR codes that say Earthborn on it. That's where you can find this video as well as a daily maintenance check video. Uh, please take a look at those so you can keep your machine in top running condition and feel free to call us anytime with any questions, uh, service, parts, anything we need. All of our numbers and contacts are in the binder that we supplied with you. Uh, thanks for watching.